what is going on we are here again what's going on good people what is the deal yo hope everyone's having a blessed blessed saturday a lot of things going on but you know we got to keep the games rolling we got to keep the movements heading towards season 11 season 10 was a fun ride all the way through it's your boy Stacks. I'm here by myself. And this one had to do it a little bit late. Apologies again for all the people on the East Coast, the Beast Coast, whatever you want to call it. But we here. We made it. We definitely made it. And we are going to go ahead and get this thing rolling for you. I'll go ahead and play a game button so y'all can at least look at stuff in the background. But we got some business to take care of. I do got to turn this sound down just a little bit in my ear. So we can go ahead and get that rolling. Mark Knight, top five, USFA QB. It's a natural system by Rahomet Fazi, a.k.a. Mr. Smoke. Let me go ahead and turn this settings down. This audio a little too loud. Don't need to be too loud. There you go. That's much better. But we are here. We're going to go ahead and start out with the show. Thanks for so much, everyone. Stopping by. Patience is key and it's critical. And I love to see it. We're going to get this thing rolling. We're going to start out with the Hall of Famers. The first ever Hall of Famers here in the United Sim Football Association. And as a guy that has seen every single game. <laughs> As the guy that's seen every single game that has ever came through in the league, there always been a couple of names that stood out. And this time around, we're just going to pick two players, one on offense and one on defense that will be inducted to the Hall of Fame. I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, now nah, they like to torture us with access while announcing. Yeah, because I'm not trying to do all that Madden stuff. I'm not making... Pro Bowl on Madden. It's not going to happen. You want to do it? You know how hard it is to move players. I'm not going to do it. So, yeah, you're, you're going to get access. But we also have to pay homage to where we started. There wouldn't be a Madden without access, in my personal opinion. So, shout out to the access team again. But just to get this thing rolling here, we're going to start with the Hall of Fame. And on offense, a stellar, stellar player. A very familiar face, won championships in three different uniforms. Just how great of a woman she is. And if you've been around the league for a while, you know exactly who I am referring to. It will be quarterback Rebecca Montaigne winning a championship in Tacoma, St. Louis, and Huntington Beach in her career. Top of the league in everything in regards to stats accomplishments pro bowls you name it she's been there she's been there done that you love to see it so congratulations first off to orbiting death who is the user for that player there and then going on to the defensive side of things it is going to be coming from the strong safety position and a lot of people are thinking that it is Preston. It is not yet Preston. He will be there eventually, but not yet because he's currently still in the league. It is going to be strong safety Bob McBob, uh, mainstay of the Tacoma eruption. I believe he played there his whole career. And definitely a great job there from him. He's been all over the field every single time. He's got the touch, not the touchdowns. He's got the tackles. He's got the interceptions. He says six ads. This is disrespectful. Well, this is why you got to go ahead and sub to the channel so you won't be done with that. But great job once again to the big homies, Rebecca Montaigne and Bob McBob. So that's going to be all good to go. Montaigne had 10 votes on her side and Bob McBob had five. So we'll go ahead and transition into the next set, which will be. The season 10 awards let's go ahead and get into it if you're with me let me hear it. yeah i love it i love it i'm seeing i'm boycotting until action senior gets in well it's gonna be a little bit we have to see what happens next season kill scroll is saying boo me it's all good it's all good i'm still gonna be here whether you boo me cheer me whatever i'm gonna be here but 
We're going to go ahead and get this thing kicked off here. We will start first and foremost with the Good Samaritan Award. And it is given to the user that has went above and beyond in regards to helping out the league being the best that it will be. And Ryan Davis still crying about the game. Hey, man, I ain't hear that because I ain't doing it. <laughs> Keep on crying then. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's all good. It's kind of late. But that's the best you're going to get from me on this side. So, ha. But we got the Good Samaritan Award. It's the user that did the most to help out the league be the best it could be. And this time it will go to Mr. John Smith a.k.a. the owner of the Charlotte Royals. As you all, as most of you already know, he's dealing with some stuff at the current moment, but he's been helping out a lot. He's been in every stream for the most part, and he's been funding the media team as well. So a lot of great things uh, that's available for him. My boy, first phrase, say RIP to John. He's still alive. He's just <laughs> dealing with some stuff right now. So make sure you show some prayers there. Make sure we try to get him back safe. Hope all is well with him in the future and look forward to seeing him again uh, when we get to it. So shout out to the big homie, John Smith. And we'll go ahead and get into these position awards. And we're going to go ahead and start out with quarterback of the year. It's going to be one of these three players as follows. And of course, I'm getting knocked at the door. Give me one. Okay, got to take this quick call, but I'm going to go ahead and get this one out here for the quarterback of the year. It's going to be either Tyler Dethridge from Huntington Beach, Aaron Nike from New York Mafia, and also James West. They're from Tampa, and it looks like the winner with 22 points out of the votes will be Tyler Dethridge out of HBV. So congratulations there on that side. And just going to go ahead and finish this call. I'll be right back. Give me two minutes. I'll be right back with you. Commercial break. <laughs> Did it?
Tonight. Okay, I'm back. Okay, okay, okay. It took me a little bit, but once again, congratulations to Huntington Beach's very own Tyler Dethridge getting that set up there for quarterback of the year. We'll see if he gets some more awards a little bit later. Going to go into the running back side of things. Running back of the year. Let's get to it. Three options here. And I got to read Caboose's writing. That's just ridiculous right now. So it looks like it'll be the Austin Wilson there for Toronto. Tamari Jones from Detroit, or formerly known as Arizona. And then they got the homie Doc Boone. They're from Charlotte. And it looks like for a unanimous vote of 33 points, it'll go to Mr. Austin Wilson. They're from Toronto. So pretty easy setup there. Had a great season. Over 1,400 rushing guards. Going to do a lot of good things there for the future. Congratulations there for the halfback. Looking a little bit further, we go to wide receiver of the year. Three options here, including Calvin Nakua. They're from New York. Kai Coco. They're from Tampa Bay. And then you also have Ryan the Diamond Davis. They're from Huntington Beach. The winner with 32 points will go to Ryan the Diamond Davis. Fairly easy one there. Led the way in touchdowns. Led the way in yards. Didn't have the catches. That actually went to Nakua. But a very, very fun setup there. Watching Death Ridge to Davis all season long. I didn't have too many doubts, but Kai Coco. Along with Calvin Nakua, definitely some great receivers. And it's going to be fun watching them all going at it again. So, congratulations again to Ryan Davis. Going into the tight end side of things. You have Joe Beasley there from Tacoma. Vic Dotson there from Charlotte. And New Jersey Battalion's very own Darren Guadiana. And it looks like... With 32 points, it is actually going to go to Mr. Vic Dotson there from Charlotte. Another great season. Again, I believe this is his fifth straight tight end of the year award. So, who's going to knock him off his porch? I don't know. But right now, in the tight end side of things, we're just living in his world. So, congratulations again to Vic Dotson, Joe Beasley, Darren Guadiana, having a great Great, great setup there as well. Looking forward to see them try to take them down. So good job there for all those guys. Our last offensive one in regards to positions will be the kicker slash punter of the year award. And we have three setups here. Looks like we have David Washington. They're from Toronto. Jake Parkey. They're from Charlotte. And Carolina Andrianic. They're from Huntington Beach. And looking at the polls here, it looks like we do have a tie. And it will be co-winners of Jake Parkey and David Washington there with 17 points apiece. So we will have our first co-winners uh, co here for what I'm seeing. Good job there. A lot of clamor about Toronto's kicker right there. <laughs> From the Toronto side of things. But he also did knock down 
the game winning kick in the United Bowl. Jake Parkey was doing Jake Parkey things, all things all things considered. Me personally, I thought that Jake Parkey was gonna win it, but the voters voted and they ended up getting the tie of seventeen. Carolina had ten points in that. And it looks like he is aggressing. Yes, he is. He's been regressing for a while, I believe. He's been in the game for a while. But regardless of that, we shall go to the defensive side of things. We will go to the defensive end of the year. And it looks like we have Damian Chambers from Detroit, formerly known as Arizona. You have Andre Krim there for Toronto. And then you also have Brendan Go, 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 Go. Go Shea, they're from New York, and three great defensive ends, but I think a lot of us expected this one to be a wash. It turned out to be a wash. Andre Krim wins unanimously with 33 points, so congratulations there for Krim making it happen. I believe this is his first time as well. I'm sure he will let me know in the chat, but having a season where you have two safeties, I, I believe that's one of the things that made it happen along with leading the league in sacks. Can't do too much better than that outside of getting a touchdown, which he didn't do. But I'm sure that's something he's going to try to do in the future. You know what I'm saying? So congratulations there to Krim. A lot of good work there in Canada as we transition over to the linebacker of the year award. Now, we have three interesting picks here. We have... Calvin Thomas, they're from Detroit, formerly known as Inc Arizona. I was calling Anchorage. Um, you have Yogi Barr, they're from the big homies in Toronto. And then you also have Tiawaya, England. They're from Tacoma. And this was an interesting race for sure in regards to the points. But it looks like the homie from Tacoma will get the edge. The tackle leader, Tyler Wire England, scrapes by with 18 points. Yogi Barr right behind him with 17. So the voters voted. The Tyler Wire England gets the job done. People in the chat saying Yogi got snubbed. I'm seeing the interesting chatter here. That's what we do. The voters voted. I think I picked. I think I picked uh, Yogi on that one on my side. But. Doesn't matter what I picked, is what the collective picked. And they said TE50 is going to take home the linebacker of the year award. And I'm pretty sure that may be a second or first. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to double check that on the website. But great job there from the veteran. I believe this is his. Yeah, his seventh season. And he's going to get potentially his first award. So great job there, nonetheless. Um, going into the cornerback of the year award, we have three players here. We have Adam Leach from Huntington Beach. You have Carson Cutbirth there from Dallas. And then you have Mikey Jackson there from Detroit, formerly known as Arizona. And it looks like Huntington Beach will take this one again. It'll go to Adam Leach here. Yeah, with an astounding 29 points out of the group, and if we're on, if we're being 100% honest with each other, Carson Cutbirth shouldn't be in the standings because he did not start the whole year. So yeah, but regardless of that, uh, that is going to Adam Leach, and looks like Mikey Jackson was actually in third place with 10 to Carson Cutbirth's 11. So got to make sure we let the people know about that. But regardless of that, definitely a great job for sure as we move over into the Safety of the Year Award. And it's going to either go to Wheezy Porter, Preston Dotson, or Jordan Vinny, Dallas, Huntington Beach, and Tampa Bay, respectively. And all three of these players make interesting cases. And it looks like it is going to go Back to Huntington Beach, Preston Dotson wins by six points. Looks like he had 21 total to Jordan Vinny's 15. Wheezy Porter with 14. So it looks like HBV is going to get another one. Preston Dotson adds on to his legacy. Jordan Vinny, he says he's the best. But the looks like the voters are not quite agreeing with him yet. But we shall see how he turns up in his new home. Ironically, 
going to be where Preston Dotson previously was. So going to be a fun ride to see that for sure. And we'll see how that turns out. As we go into the bigger awards here, we're going to go ahead and start with the Offensive Player of the Year. And it looks like we have three different players. Again, it'll either go to Ryan Davis, it'll go to Austin Wilson, or Huntington Beach's quarterback, Tyler Detheridge. And it looks like Austin Wilson will not be that guy because it'll be another tie. It'll be another split. 15 points apiece there to Detheridge and Davis. So the quarterback wide receiver crew actually will split the award and looks like they will go ahead and take it. Both halves going to HBV. So interesting set. I would have thought Austin probably would have been over Davis maybe. 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 But hey, barely lost out. But a great job nonetheless. All three of those players are going to be great. Drop machine doesn't deserve it. <laughs> They're my first fray. But we'll go ahead and continue on to the defensive player of the year. Looks like there's three different players. Again, there's Preston Dotson, Adam Leach, and Andre Krim. Preston Dotson there. Looks like he will be in third place. With eight points, but the winner of this will go to Andre Krim with once again a stellar season at the defensive line spot with 22 points total on the votes. Can't be mad at that. Adam Leach had a very good season as well, leading the league in interceptions, along with some more stuff with the pass deflections, all the good stuff, but just a little bit too short. Um, in regards to the vote, Andre Krem will do it again. So he will get his first ever Defensive Player of the Year award as well. So great job all the way around Andre Krem doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? So we transition to the rookies. Let's talk about the rookies a little bit. It's going to go to the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. And it looks like we have Uncle Swoosh there from Detroit, formerly known as Arizona. You also have Tamari Jones at halfback from Detroit, formerly known as Arizona. And then you also have Toronto's quarterback, Jack James, there for the rates. So going to be pretty ridiculous there. Me personally, I would say Calvin Nicole should be up there as well. I would say four. This was a very fun race there for Offensive Rookie of the Year. But it looks like it will go to the quarterback for Toronto, Mr. Jax James getting the 20 piece in regards to the points over Tamari Jones, the 16. Uncle Swoosh had 13. So that hey, I'm just reading what the voter said. Don't don't pick on me. I just I just say what I said. I read what I read. And it looks like Jax James will win this one here. So uh once again, congratulations there for Jax James. But I do agree, me personally, I would put Calvin Nakua the up there. Um, at least, if he was going to win, me personally, I would say at the at the high or at the low second place, I wouldn't put him lower than that, me personally. But, yeah, that's pretty crazy. But it looks like we'll go ahead and move on to the defensive rookie of the year. And it looks like we do have some great players here. It looks like Damian Chambers there from Detroit, formerly known as Arizona. Looks like they also have Brendan Gaucher. They're from the New York Mafia. And the final player will be Mr. T. Knight. Titanium T. Knight. However you want to say it. And it looks like from this side of things. Looks like the winner will be. Mr. T. Knight. Barely edging out Gaucher. 16 points to 14 there to Gaucher. Damian Chambers comes through in third place with 11. So, looks like congratulations there to Mr. T. Knight getting his first ever award. Great job there. Um, looking at the GM of the year. The GM of the year. Going to be a fun ride here. Starting out with Mr. Undefeated in the regular season, Ryan Davis. He is on the list. You have Cal Wu, the owner for Detroit, formerly known as Arizona. And then you also have Mr. Tom Riddell, a.k.a. Andre Krim, repping Toronto. 
Now, I mean, it's, he's undefeated in the regular season. It's true. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he's ever lost in the regular season. That's actually pretty impressive when you think about it. But we still have these three great, great owners, and only one can win it. Mister Kyle, what's happened? I see you in the stream in a while. What's happening? Who do y'all think is going to win GM of the year? Will it be Riddell? Will it be Davis? Or will it be Mr. Wu? Well, I won't let you wait for that long. It is going to go to Mr. Krim, a.k.a. Tom Riddell. He is going to win it with a 30-point set. He Almost won it unanimously, if you're really being honest with you. Ryan Davis right behind him with 15. Cal Wu at 11. And me personally, I think Cal Wu should at least be ahead of Davis. Mostly because of where uh, Arizona was when he got there to where he is now. That's, that's just me personally, because it's kind of the same thing from Riddell. But I think what uh, Tom, what he was able to do, and he was able to defeat Cal Wu within the regular season. I think that I think that was one of the things that kind of swayed my vote towards him. So once again, great job for all of these three, um, along with all of the team owners. I appreciate each and every one of y'all staying plugged in. The season is coming soon, so make sure y'all playbooks are ready. All the good stuff. So we'll go into the mix here. And there's one more award to talk about. The most valuable player. He didn't beat y'all? I thought he did. I had to double check that. I could have swore. Didn't y'all play? I thought Arizona and Toronto played. And, and they beat y'all. Or did or did y'all win? Oh, 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 okay. Oh, my bad. Okay, well, maybe I read it wrong. Maybe Kyle Wu should won. Who knows? I don't know. But we're going to keep it moving. Like I said, the voters voted. I, I could have swore y'all lost that game. I could have swore. But it probably was a... Was it a primetime game? Was it a primetime game? I probably would remember if it was probably a good game. I mean, I could still be wrong. I didn't say I remember all my games. I said I watched all the commentary on most of them. Do you know how... You know what 6 times 14 is plus 5 equals... Do you know how many games that is? It's a lot of games. It was a sack. Oh, oh, I think I remember a little bit of it, though. Not fully, but, like, um, I think they needed to get down the field and they lost on the sack or something like that. But good job nonetheless. Looking forward to see all of y'all in the group next season. So we got the MVP, most valuable player, and it's going to be between these three players here. It'll be between quarterback Tyler Deathridge, they're from Huntington Beach. It'll be either Aaron Ike. They're from New York Mafia. And then you also have the halfback Austin Wilson. They're from Toronto. So a lot of great views here. And by the scoreboard, number one and number two is off by one point. One of these players had 20, the other had 19. And the winner happens to live in Canada. It is going to Austin Wilson, who had himself just an immaculate season. The run game showed out. I think it really showed out in that United Bowl game for real, for real. But all season long, he was just plugging away. Upset season. A lot of people thought that Deathridge was going to this one. So that'll be it for the awards. Once again, congratulations. A lot of Huntington Beach and Toronto players in this one. But yeah, it looks like Austin Wilson won by about one by one point, twenty to nineteen. And it looks like Aaron Nike had ten on that side. So interesting set. Congratulations. Last year was because playoffs didn't matter for the awards. Yeah. I mean, hey, look, look at that, too. I mean, I don't know. I just threw that in there. <laughs> I just threw that in there. But 
we're going to keep it moving here. We are done with the awards. We're done with the Hall of Fame. So we can go ahead and talk about the schedules. Let's go ahead and get into it. What team should I start out with? Just kidding. I already know what team I'm going to start out with. We are going to start with the Tampa Bay Typhoon. And we'll go ahead and put that thing up right here, right now. Let's go ahead and see if I can stretch it to screen so you can see it a little bit better. But we're going to go ahead and start it out with the Tampa Bay Typhoon. It'll start with Toronto. Then they'll head. Actually, not head, but they got New Jersey. Then they got New York. So they have two straight home games. Actually, three straight home games if you include St. Louis. They got week five away at Pittsburgh then they'll have Charlotte at home they'll have Anchorage on the road then they'll also have a trip to New York to face the Mafia they have Charlotte they will be on the road then they have the big home is at Pittsburgh at home they have Dallas on the road then they got Huntington Beach at home, so HBV is going to be traveling to Tampa. Then they'll close the season out with New Jersey on the road, and then they'll travel. Well, actually, no, I take that back. No, they'll be sitting at home while Toronto takes a trip to Florida. So, so great job there. We'll see what happens. Give me your uh, amount of wins in the chat of what you'll think Tampa Bay will do with this schedule. If I was to look straight up. I'll say I will give myself I'll give him eight as well. I'm thinking like seven to nine wins on this one. So interesting to see for sure. As we'll go ahead and flip over to the next team, we'll go stay. We'll stay on the East Coast for this side of things, and then we'll transition to the West. We'll go ahead and travel to New Jersey. As we'll go ahead and get into it. Shout out to the big home is the Battalion doing their thing. They're gonna have New York come to their hometown, which is pretty much the same hometown. We're starting with the Hudson River Battle. Then they're gonna take the trip to Dallas. Actually, I take that back. They're going to go down on this one. So, thank you, Caboose, for making this completely different on all these graphics. But, yeah, I, I tried to tell Caboose, but you don't like listening to me. Like, I, I told him beforehand when he was making them, you just want to mess everything up. So, um, but yeah, you yeah, have uh, Huntington Beach. Let's see what week they have. Did they have Huntington Beach? No, they do not have Huntington Beach on the schedule. So they're going to be staying away from the gauntlet there. But they got New York to start out the season at home. They take the trip to Florida to see Tampa. Then they got Tacoma on the road. So they'll be traveling to the Pacific Northwest. Then they got Pittsburgh at home. So a little uh, back and forth action right there. Um, they got a road trip to Dallas. Then they got St. Louis coming to them. They have Charlotte on the road, so they got to travel to Charlotte. They got Toronto. Then they got New York, Detroit. Then they have the big home is in Charlotte again, but they'll be the home team. Then they got Toronto at home. Actually got three games at home to close out the season. They got Tampa, and then they'll finish the game on the road against Pittsburgh. So on this, just off of this schedule alone, I see at the max six wins, four to six wins there for New Jersey. Just off a of cusp, not putting any strategies in, just off of talent for what I'm seeing. Somewhere between four to six, probably fighting for that final spot in the East. And I do see that my home and gift of the sub, my boy. As we go ahead and transition into the next team, 
On the east, we'll go ahead and go with Pittsburgh. Let's go ahead and get into it. Shout out to the Roughnecks there. Once again, is going up and down like an idiot. But they're going to start out their season against Charlotte. Then they play Toronto. Pretty tough start right there. But that's how I was going to the west. I meant to say going to the east. I was staying on the east and then go to the west. That's what I meant to say. But uh, let's see. They got Charlotte, then Toronto. Then they have Anchorage. And then they got New Jersey. They got the big homers in Tampa Bay. They got New York, Toronto, Charlotte. It looks like the schedule gets a lot easier for them in the later portion. They got Dallas, Tampa, St. Louis, Tacoma. They have New York and then New Jersey. So off of this... I think they're going to split one against Charlotte. I, I, I just have a sneaky feeling Charlotte's going to drop one to Pittsburgh this year. And I think off the total... Two, three, four, six. They have... They honestly can get around 10 wins. They could get around 10 wins if they play strong. Only thing is they need to find a way to close out the season the right way. Damn, I don't get my former team this year. Yeah. Yeah, no, no siree. But a good job there from Pittsburgh. Can't wait to see what they do. That's going to be three teams down. And we'll stay on the East Coast. We'll go ahead and talk about the Mafia. Let's go ahead and get into it. As it looks like it's going back down, up and down again. Let's see what they got. They got New Jersey, of course. They're going to play against Charlotte. They have Tampa. They got Toronto. They got Detroit. They have Pittsburgh, Tacoma, Tampa Bay again, New Jersey again. Then they got Toronto, HBV, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and Charlotte. A very, very tough schedule here for New York. 10 will be interesting to see. I don't know if I have them at that high. I think at the high, I'll probably give them like eight, maybe nine. I don't, I don't see this as a 10 win season for them. I think next season after another draft and more work on the grind, I think they could probably get eight, six to eight. I'm, I'm leaning six to eight. A lot of people are saying seven. So um, I think we're all in agreement right there. But shout out to the Tommy Gun Wielders. Can't wait to see what they do in the following season as we push towards our second to last Eastern team. We'll go ahead and talk about Charlotte. And we'll go ahead and move into it. Could not make it to the United Bowl this past season. They're trying to get back up in there. As it looks like uh, Ryan, like he did it right this way. Like he should just did it this way every single time. But he, I don't know what it is. But they're going to start out with Pittsburgh. Then they have New York, Dallas, HBV. They have Toronto. They have Tampa Bay. Then they have New Jersey. Then Pittsburgh again, and then Tampa Bay. Then they have Anchorage, New Jersey, Detroit, Toronto, and then they'll close out with the Mafia. So if I was to give them amount of wins this season, I could give them 10 11 wins. I think they can definitely make that far. But I'm I'm going to make their floor a little bit lower. I think if the worst comes to worst, they'll have, have probably around like 8 wins. So 8 to 11 I have in that area. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the Royal family. And last but not least, in the Eastern Conference, we have the big home is in Toronto, your champions of Season 10. They're coming out with a pretty strong schedule, if I do say so myself. They're going to start out with Tampa at home. Then they're going to go ahead and try to take care of business with Pittsburgh. They got Detroit for the first time ever. Then they have New York for the first four games. They have Charlotte, HBV, Pittsburgh, and New Jersey. 
in their next four games. They have they have Anchorage, New York, Tacoma, and New Jersey. And then they have Charlotte and Tampa Bay to close out the season. A very, very strong setup. I kind of see the same thing from what I said for Charlotte. I could see 11 wins, potentially 12. I don't see them going undefeated, but I see them being very competitive still. Again, going to be interesting to see what they do for sure. I'm thinking around like 8 to 10. Yeah, I see Ryan with 8. I see Tom with 10. I could definitely see it around that range as well. So, good job there. Uh, Can't wait to see what you do as we transition over to the Western Conference. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start it out with the new team on the block or or the new digs. You know what I'm saying? We're going to try out Detroit. Let's go ahead and see what they're cooking with to start out the season in their new team. Poe politicking, throwing out the biddies. be interesting for sure why you always do hpv last i'm trying to go to bed i'll now do it uh probably third or fourth probably third or fourth okay fine okay so we got that going there uh they got st louis to start out the season it'll be their first official home game in detroit can't wait to see that they have hbv toronto so they're going straight up with the two united bowl teams to start out the season they have Tacoma, New York, Dallas, HBV again. They have Tacoma again. Then they got St. Louis, New Jersey, Anchorage, Charlotte, Dallas, and then Anchorage. Now, this team screams like a number two team in the West again. I could definitely see them going around like 11, 8 to 11 wins and still win the second seed. That's how I kind of feel about Detroit. They still have the same team. They got better. The team is loaded all the way through. Can't wait to see what they do. If I was to pick a number on it, I kind of agree with Kyle Wu and uh, the big homie right there, Krim. They say 11. I could see an 11-3 and three record there for uh, the big homies in Detroit. A lot of great things happening there for sure. Now, we'll go ahead and transition into the next team. We're going to go with... Dakoma, we're going to go with the eruption here. Let's go ahead and get into it. Starting with the Battle of Fire and Ice, they're going to play against Anchorage at home. Then they got Dallas, New Jersey, and Detroit for their first four games there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Week five, they have St. Louis, Anchorage, New York, and then Detroit again. So they'll play Detroit in the first eight weeks, and then if they was to play again, they'll be in the playoffs if that's a possibility. They got HBV, Dallas, Toronto, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, and then HBV to close out the season. And I'm looking at that week 14 game right there. Essentially, Tacoma needs to win out early if possible. Because if it comes down to one last game and they got to play against HBV, I'm not liking their chances. That's just my personal opinion. A lot of people might share that. We'll see what you say in the chat. But... Other than that, let me see how many wins they could potentially get. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, potentially, seven, eight, nine. I see, I can see at the high at eight wins. I can see at the high at eight wins. But keep in mind that there is new life here in Tacoma because they have a new owner. Uh, well, new filler owner, I guess, if you want to call him. And he's going to be trying his best to get them right. So, I say the high is at eight, but I do agree. Like, worst comes to worst, I can see them being around, like, four wins, five wins. Tacoma has talent, okay? Tacoma has talent on this team. So, I, I wouldn't sleep on them, me personally. But I think a lot of these games are winnable there for Tacoma. I see, I can see them sweeping Anchorage, and I can see them sweeping Dallas. Just me personally. It's a possibility. That's all I'm saying. And I could, it's a potential that they could beat New York. We never know. I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing out possibilities out there. You might not agree, but it's definitely doable for sure. So we'll go ahead and wrap that up there. Shout out to Tacoma. Good luck on your season. 
as we'll go ahead and go to Huntington Beach. Let's go ahead and get them on the board, the runner-ups of the United Bowl in Season 10. And they're going to go ahead and start out with Dallas doing their thing. And then they got Anchorage, Tacoma, Anchorage again. Then they have Detroit for the first time. They have Toronto after that, so they're going to have that United Bowl rematch. That will be the last game of that week. I'm already making it. Uh, St. Louis right after that. Then they have St. Louis, Detroit, New York, Tacoma. They have Charlotte, Dallas, and then Tampa Bay. A lot of people are saying that HBV will not go undefeated this season. But until they get beat in the regular season, I gotta, I gotta give it to them at the low twelve wins. But it's still doable there for them to go undefeated. That's all I'm really gonna say on that. They still have the quarterback. They still have the halfback. They still have that strong, strong defense all the way around, and it got better. I mean, honestly, can't really confirm. Uh, that they won't go undefeated. I have to see it to believe it. It's that type of mode. So, interested to see their good luck there to HBV. As we move on to the next team, it will go to St. Louis. Let's go ahead and get into it. It's going to be starting with Detroit. They're on the road. Then they have Anchorage, then HBV. They have Tampa Bay. They got Tacoma after that. New Jersey, Detroit. Anchorage, they have Detroit again, they have HBV, they have Pittsburgh, New York, Tacoma, and then Dallas. Yeah, you know it wasn't me that did it. Mine are actually quality, you know what I'm saying? Mine are actually quality. <laughs> but we're going to keep it moving here. Um, in regards to the amount of wins that St. Louis could get, one, two, three... Yeah, I, I tried telling him you don't want to listen to nobody. I kind of agree with the three there. I could see three, maybe four wins, maybe five. I'll give him five at the high. I still don't see this team as a playoff caliber one. They still need a draft or two to finalize some of those other areas that is going to be hard for them to get. And that was the interception. Y'all couldn't see it on the game. Not that y'all care. Because it's not Madden, but it's all good. But I think like two to five wins. I don't think they'll go one and 13. I think they'll sneak out a couple more wins on this one. Um, It was just some, uh, I think it was Detroit. Yeah, Detroit's killing LA right now in the game. Not that y'all matter. Y'all don't care about access. Let's play Roblox. Like, like what? Like, what is wrong with y'all? But we're going to keep it moving here. We did Tacoma. We did St. Louis. We did HBV. We did Detroit. There's just two more teams left. I will go ahead and coin flip it. And it looks like it chose the big homies in Anchorage. So we'll go ahead and see Anchorage on this. And they're going to start out with Tacoma. Then they have HBV. That is a rough stretch there. HBV, then Toronto, and then HBV again on the road. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is a horrible start to the schedule. But they have a little bit of ease after that. They have St. Louis and Tacoma. They, they could get wins. They have Charlotte. They have Detroit. Then they have... Oh, actually, no, I'm reading this wrong. My bad. It's going to be... See, this is why I keep telling Caboose not to do these. I'm, I'm going to do these next year. I don't give a darn anymore. But it's going to be Tacoma, then St. Louis, and then Pittsburgh, and then Dallas. Then they have HBV, Tacoma, Tampa Bay, then St. Louis. They're going to have Toronto, Charlotte, Detroit, then Dallas. And then they'll close out the season HBV at Detroit. Now, in regards to Anchorage... They're a little bit of a bubble playoff team. Um, I think I still see them around that area. I got to see how many ones, though. I think they'll split with Tacoma. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five. And I think they might split one of these harder games. Might be able to split Detroit, maybe. At the high six. 
I think the lowest that could get is probably four, seven. I'll, yeah, four to seven. I'll say four to seven there for Anchorage right there. Like seven to seven. Uh, still working on a few of those things. I see my boy Wolf Gold in there. He's right. He's ready to go. Next season starting next week. Let's get it. Uh, but yeah, going to be interesting to see what they do on that. And then the final team will be the Dallas Dragons. Went through all of them. Let's go ahead and finish it off. On this one, we are going to start with HBV. Then they got Tacoma, Charlotte, and then Anchorage to start their first four games. They have New Jersey, Detroit, St. Louis, and HBV again. Then they finish it off with Pittsburgh, Tacoma, Tampa Bay, Anchorage, Detroit, and then St. Louis. I feel that they are in the same boat as Anchorage. They're right in that area. Bubble playoff team need a few more pieces. They think they got it in the draft. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think Dallas will finish ahead of Anchorage. So I'm going to say eight wins to around, I mean, I'll say around like five wins to eight wins. So like somewhere around that range there for Dallas. I think they may make the playoffs. Because a certain player is not there anymore. I think they have a chance now. That's just me personally. So, going to be interesting to see there. As we're going to go ahead and wrap this up in a little bit. But we got to figure out who is going to host the United Bowl. And who is also going to host the... uh, who's also going to host the entry draft. So, we'll go ahead and start with... The United Bowl and the United Bowl for season 11 will happen in Detroit. So we're going to have a Motor City United Bowl. Going to be a fun ride there. And then we got to figure out who will be the location for the draft coming up. And that is going to go to... Tacoma. So we're going to have another one in Tacoma. Going to be a fun ride there. Draft is in Tacoma. United Bowl in Detroit for the first time. And outside of that, that was pretty much all of it. Uh, Almost an hour. Pretty long stream there, but a fun ride. How's everyone feeling about the schedules? How's everyone feeling about uh, the season coming up? And everything like that, let me know. Oh, yeah, the Pro Bowls. That is that is a good thing. That is a good thing that I could probably talk about. So, let's go ahead and bring that up. Let me see if I can go ahead and fit the screen. Whoops. Let me go ahead and center screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that window off and let's go ahead and bring this thing up real quick. And your pro bowlers will be as follows. And we have that up right there. Looks like on the western side of things, it'll be quarterback Tyler Detheridge at quarterback. Tamari Jones and Davin Brewer will be the halfbacks. Wide receivers will be Ryan Davis, Keith Simmons, Sean McGowan and Earl Flint. Tight ends will be Joe Beasley and Keen and Kurt. Kicker will be Carolina Andrianic. And punter will be Firestarter Prodigy. They're from Tacoma. On defense, they have Damian Chambers, Josh Lawyer, Tyree Wells, and Gronky Kong on the D line. Linebackers will be T Knight, Tyre Wire England, Mike Edwards, and Calvin Thomas. Cornerback will be Adam Leach. And Mikey Jackson, along with X-Pac. And then the safeties will be Preston Dotson and Wheezy Porter. So, definitely an interesting set right there as we move into the eastern side of things. But it looks like they have quarterback James West. Halfbacks would be Austin Wilson and Doc Boone. Wide receivers would be Calvin Nakua, Kai Coco, Zachariah Branch, and Phoenix Jones. Tight end will be Vic Dotson and Darren Guadiana. Kicker will be Jake Parkey. Punter will be Potty Potty. And on the defensive side of things, they have Andre Krim, 
Jerry Philbin, Darnell Pope, and Brendan Gauthier. Linebackers will be John Smith, Yogi Barr, Dexter Jackson, and Austin Wheeler. Corners will be Phoenix Jones Jr., Kilo Mack, Jordan Vinny, and Big House the third, and Lawrence Sands will be the secondary. I said I combined them all, my bad. So the secondary will be PJJ, Kilo, JV, Big House the third, and Lawrence Sands. So that'll be the setup right there for you. Congratulations to our season 10 Pro Bowlers. Pro Bowl will be on tomorrow night. And it should be on time, assuming nothing crazy happens. There will be at 7 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And outside of that, we could go ahead and wrap this one up. It looks like Detroit on the game as well. They they put that work on L.A., as you can see, 30 to 3. But we'll close it up here. Thank you so much for everyone that stopped by listening out to what's happening. And we'll go ahead and transition into the Pro Bowl coming up tomorrow stay safe and have a blessed rest of your night everybody thank you so much for your patience but until then we'll go ahead and talk to you later ah.